Looking for a way to add some visual interest to your designs? Well, today I'm going to introduce you to a great free tool called GetWaves.io that'll produce really nice little elements that you can use in your presentations, business cards, websites, and anywhere else you want to provide a little bit of design punch. Let's get started. So the website, simply enough, is GetWaves.io. And it is a fantastic little tool that's going to allow you to create simple wave SVG. Now SVG is a particular file type that works based, it's a vector file type. So it's going to let you scale it as much as you want, large or small. It's also going to be very small, which is useful. And you'll be able to add it into Canva, uh, presentations, PowerPoint, Google Slide, websites, anywhere. So to get started quick, so just going to getways.io and you'll see immediately kind of gives me this blue wave. Um, you can change this color to whatever you want and in fact I have ready to go here a purple closer to my brand and from there you roll the dice and you see just keep doing shapes and immediately you can kind of imagine this at the bottom of a presentation, a business card, a website, anywhere you like. Um, if you want to see different options here we go you can do square and just play around to your heart's content to see what it might look like. Let's go uh, angles two, and then how many? How crazy do you want to get? So it's uh, you'll lose a little bit of time on here. <laughs> it could be a lot of fun. You can actually play here with uh, transparency too. So if you want to not exactly be to sit over top of elements or to not be as sharp. Um, for myself, I kind of like this wave, and you know what? This is actually really nice. I like this curve here. So after you get it where you want it to be, you've changed your color, you've played around with the various shapes, you can go ahead and hit download. So it'll give you two options. So as I mentioned, SVG is actually a vector, but it's also code. So if you have an application that lets you add it in, that's great. But for your purposes, it's better to hit here and hit download SVG. We'll do so. And simple enough, there it is. It's on our computer ready to use. So I have it downloaded into my uh, file system. Let's go ahead and add it into some designs. So I have a Canva design here. I'm going to go into Uploads. Let's go ahead and upload an image. There we go, and immediately it shows up. So if I click on it, it's into the design. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these just dark. And then we'll make the background white so we can really get a sense of what it looks like. And from here you can play around. Where would you like it to go? So we could put it at the top, kind of add a fun and funky view of it. Right? So I'll drag it up to the top, scale it over, and boom. Like what a vast difference that, that creates. Right? So we can now what's nice, nice with Canva is that anything you drag off will actually just clip beautifully. So if you want to really play with the shape and get it where you want it, you can go that way. Another way we could play with this is if we, let's shift it back around, and let's have it overtake the text and make the, make the text white. I'll tell you what, I'm going to flip it because this size is big right here. Flip horizontally. So what I want to happen is I want it to be, I want this text to just be sitting on this wave. So I'm going to keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And what the beautiful thing is because it's an SVG, it's a vector file, it's going to let me drag as much as I want to or resize as much as I want without losing any quality. The lines will never get pixelated. So I'll go like that. Let's position to the back. Let's go ahead and put that there. Another great option for us to consider. So let's go to over to a social media post. And the same thing, let's see the effect that adding our little wave into it will do for us. All the better, this is for a seafood grill, so this type of wave kind of mimics the ocean, which is kind of a fun effect for it. Let's make it larger, and let's make it larger, get it into the back. Cool, let's do that same thing where we're going to make the text white at the bottom. So position, backwards. And let's get this text, make it the white, the same kind of beige that is in the background. Very cool effect. You can also see this. Let's duplicate that so we can play around. You could imagine where instead we had it as the top to cover the logo. So we'll move it around. Well, 
lots of options, of course. And the best part of a program like this is we can play as much as we want. So we could have it smaller on the bottom. We could also flip it around and maybe, much like our business card we just did, it overtakes the logo on the top and have the logo be a different color. Quick trick within Canva. Uh, so in this case, I want it to be a little bit lower. Right? And I could either go back to Get Waves and create a brand new one that has a few less lines so I can easily more cover it up. Well, in this case too, I can also just draw a square and then color it that same purple. Kind of extending that shape as much as I would need it to. So let's uh, grab those two, put those two back. Let's take our logo, I'll make this bright and white, and now I can play around with it like that. You can see now instead, because I've added that square, it kind of appends to it, as opposed to simply me needing to use the entire shape, instead it'll kind of append to this square in the background. So, small little additional tip for how to maybe use it. And there's another option, so you can see a wave kind of flowing on the bottom, or kind of a wave kind of flowing on the top to take in the logo. Really quick, let's uh, add it once more to a slideshow. So title, text, fairly boring, but if we go ahead and add a wave into it, just add a bit of a visual punch, a bit of visual interest to it. So when I dragged it in there, it actually put it as, instead just kind of went to it as an item. So instead it looks like we'll have to specifically upload it. Let me do that now. Oop. So it looks like the SVG is not supported for this. And this is actually a situation that happens on websites too, specifically WordPress. So because SVG is vector, but it's also uh, done through code, there is a potential for SVG to have some malware in it or some bad code. So WordPress, as of this recording, and it looks like Google Slide does not support it. However, there's a way we can get around this. Let's say the shape is just perfect. We love this shape. We've used it across many visual elements and we want to reuse it for our design. Not a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to come back to Canva. We're going to put in the shape. Uh, we'll make it large. I'd suggest you go uh, 1920 on the width and then make the height kind of whatever you want. Ideally a little bit smaller so the file size isn't too large. I'm going to resize this actually. There we go. So I just resize it just because you don't want to have, I'm going to make this transparent and having it transparent would mean that there's a lot more file size. So I went to wave.io, got the wave that I wanted. Now I want to use it inside of Google slide and my website, which does not let me use SVGs. So I'll come back over to Canva and just add it in to a blank space. At this point, I'm going to download it. Now I'm going to download it as a PNG with a transparent background. You don't necessarily need a transparent background, it just gives you more options. But I'm going to download it as a PNG. Okay, so now I have my PNG ready to go. Let's try that again with Google Slides and on the website. So now you can see because it's a PNG, it's an accepted file type. And it's not throwing me the errors anymore. So what a difference in having the and having a nice, beautiful wave element, a, a real nice visual punch on the bottom of our design. And real, last quick, let's do it real quick within a website. So for my website, I use Beaver Builder. Uh, you might use Divi or Elementor, or perhaps even on Wix or Squarespace. It'll work those places too. Let's go ahead and add in a row, two columns, and we'll put a text on the left side. So I drag it in. Uh, so now this is a container that has two other containers for us to have stuff in. I want our wave to be at the bottom of the big container from where I'm going to put the text. So I'm going to go into settings. And we're going to just make reduce some of the spacing so it goes as far across as possible. Now I'm going to choose, I've, again, I'm in the settings of the row or the container that's holding the other containers. And at this point, I'll go into the background of it. Now the exact way, again, if you're using Elementor, this of course will look different, but the theory is the same, where the large container that contains the other parts, I want it to have an image. 
So select the settings of that container and find where you can add a background image. So in this case, photo in the leave in the media library, let me upload the PNG we just worked with. Because again, uh, as of this recording, SVGs for WordPress are not allowed. Select that photo, and there you go. It's been added in. Now, uh, additionally, what I'd like it to do is make sure it's at the bottom. So right now it's positioned in the center. I'd like it to be at the bottom. Now you'll want to play around with this, of course, center bottom. As you're uh, on your own website, you want to make sure you play around with it and kind of get the exact flow and positioning that you want. But I just want to show you quick some of the possibilities. Um, I'm going to add some, let's see, height. Don't like full height. Let's go minimum height. Let's make that uh, 600 so that no matter what content's in there, it's always at least going to be this height. In this case, let's put that to 500. And then from here, we can add some text. So heading. What text? Shall, what color should we do? Let's try black. Like, how great are waves? I think now you'll want to play around with it to make sure there's enough contrast between the two. Now this purple and that black is not really having it show up too nicely. So two ways to go about this. Um, so you could either ideally go back to waves.o and download one that is transparent. You could, inside of Canva, when we saved it, make that transparent. In my case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat just because I don't want to uh, spend too much more time here. So if we do a background overlay, and again, uh, this would be, you've added a photo to the container, and now we're adding a color on top of it. So these are layers. And this color on top of it, which I'm going to make white so it looks like it's hiding it, I'll set to like 50%. So overlay color, what color? Let's go ahead with, <laughs> yeah, red, that looks beautiful. <laughs> Let's go with white. And then on, in my case, I can adjust the transparency over here. There we go. Okay, so now we can actually read the text. There's enough contrast, looks good. Let's make that H1, so it's a big full title. Let's add a button. Click here to make your own. Wonderful. So there we have it. So getwaves.io, a really fun, free tool you can use to create your own SVG waves or steps or anything else you'd like to do. Lots of fun to just mess around and options to see which ones you'd like. Complexity, uh, sharpness, uh, transparency, so much stuff that you can do with it. And as you can see, it adds a real interesting visual to business cards, PowerPoints, uh, social media posts, lots of fun ways that you can add a real great visual design element to anything you're working on. So I hope you found that useful. I uh, would love to hear your comments or ideas or show me different ways that you've been able to use it. And I hope you have really great fun with it. Until next time, cheers to your great design.